The following presentation is brought to you by KMmedia.pro. Please visit KMmedia.pro for more information. Now stay right where you are as we present. Welcome to Positive Talk Radio, evolving ideas, one conversation at a time. Great guests, dynamic stories and interviews, plus new thoughts on a wide range of topics and concepts. I hope that you'll hang with me, Kevin McDonald, my friends, and of course, you, as together we work to understand why we are all here and what we can do to make our world a better place for all of us to be happy, be kind, and live in peace together. Yep, that's Positive Talk Radio. On a Positive Talk Radio, we've got a couple of returning veterans onto the show, and I want to thank you both for being here. They are uh, John and Christine Cole, and they also are artists, and they also have unique gifts, and they also are behind the power, which is the uh, uh, program that Allison Roberts is putting on which is October 19th through the 21st. And you can get tickets, go to allisonroberts.com and you can get virtual tickets or you can actually go there. And we're going to talk about that a little bit because I think it'd be a lot of fun for people to actually go there and say hello. And by the way, if you are just tuning in and you want to make a comment um, to say hello to our guests, you can certainly do that as well. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing good. How are you, Kevin? I'm awesome, thank you. And you know, <clears throat> I don't ever have a bad day doing this. I got to tell you, oh. I get to I get to talk to some of the most unique and honestly gifted people that I've ever met, and it, it really is a lot of fun for me to do. So I want to thank both of you for being here. I interviewed Christine last week, John, a couple of weeks back, and uh, I I mentioned to Christine that if you want to come on, you ask John and. And, and he graciously accepted to share time with his lovely wife. So I, I think that's really great. And, and by the way, Carrie has joined us and she says, hello, my friends. Hey, Carrie. Hey, hey Carrie. So let's, let's talk, first of all, about Behind the Power and what you guys are going to be doing there. Okay, Christine, you want to start? <laughs> sure. Um, so I will be getting on stage. Um, I'll be on the third day and, uh, they're going to choose someone out of the audience and I'm either going to connect with a animal loved one or a human loved one. And I'm going to do a sketch, um, like I would normally do when I do my readings and then I'll give them the reading on stage. And then once the event's over and I get back home, I'll be able to put that painting together for them from the sketch and then I'll send them the sketch and the painting after when it's completed. You know, that's really, that's really a cool concept that you're doing for people and you can, you can put it together over, you know, a period of time and you can think about it and you can put it all together and it really is a nice idea. And so, so somebody's going to be really, really happy with what they get. I hope so. And I hope that they receive like beautiful messages and some healing um, from the connection that I receive between their loved one, whether again, it's animal or human. So I look forward to it and it brings me joy. And I hope that they really, really find some healing from it. And John is a um, career Coast Guard man. He did that for, I think it was 35 years, wasn't yep, it? Yep, 35 years, Kevin, yep. That's that's huge. And by the way, thank you for your service. You're welcome. And and uh, you retired from that, and you took up painting and doing some other stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your painting a little bit. What, what kind of uh, uh, subjects and what, what do you do? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, first of all, it's great to be back on your show again. I think this is a great opportunity for not only myself, but for Christine and everybody. You're, you're allowing us to really to speak from the heart and, and share, share our stories with other people. I think that's fantastic. Uh, as far as the paintings go, um, you know, a little bit about me, you know, years ago when I was back in high school, back in the mid eighties or so, I did a lot of artwork and things like that. That, that was something that I really had a passion for. But of course, when you join the military, sometimes you have to put things aside. And I put that aside for a lot longer than I thought I was going to put it aside. I mean, 
more than three decades is a very long time to put something aside. It is. Um, yeah. But, but I ended up doing that. I, I, I kind of, I kind of got the spark to paint again when I was living in Hawaii with Christine, uh, you know, two tours before I ended up retiring in 2020. And I found that I really enjoyed that. There was something soothing about painting. And these days what I'm primarily focused on is pet portraits. So, you know, the animal doesn't necessarily have to be deceased or, or not. Um, you know, if I have a photograph of the animal, I can, I can either do it in what I would call a pointillistic style. Um, I am dabbling a little bit in oil painting, which is a lot of fun. Uh, matter of fact, when I go to Behind the Power this year in October, I'll, I'll have some examples of my paintings. So, so a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I'm kind of trying to narrow down exactly, you know, where my specialty is. And I'll tell you, my dad had um, his favorite dog in his entire life painted before the dog passed. Mm. And they hung it in a prominent place in their house so that every time after, the, after uh, uh, she passed, uh, he could look at her and remember fondly the, the warmth and love that they had for each other. Right. So her name, her name was Susie and she was just, he, he loved her to death. And, and so doing that, if you're listening to this now or in the future, doing that for somebody is a really, it's one of those presents that people don't think about necessarily, but it's one of those presents that people go, I never would have thought of that. What a wonderful idea. So Talk to John. John, if somebody wants to find out how to get a hold of you, how do they do that if they want to send you a picture? All right. Yeah, I've got a website. It's johnrobertcole.com. And up there, I've got a portfolio, not, a, not only of the pet portraits that I've done, but also of some of the other paintings and things like that. Uh, but there is a link up there that, that addresses how to go about asking for a portrait. So there isn't like an order form there because what ends up happening is that if the pictures aren't very clear, I mean, I really need a good picture of, of the animal because for me, I'd want my animal to look like my animal as opposed to somebody else's animal because it's a poor picture. So in some cases, there may be a little bit of negotiation to settle on that perfect shot. Uh, but once that perfect shot is set, then I can go ahead and move forward and do that portrait. So now the two of you are now both painters. Do you uh, um, talk about painting quite a bit? Does that uh, entered your world as, as kind of an important piece? Well, I can tell you that Michael's, the craft store has certainly entered our world more now than ever before. <laughs> you know, why, why we're not allotting money to them, I don't know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> You should be stockholders. They, they, oh, you're getting, they, they're getting quite, uh, they, I bet you they know you by your first names too. Well, they, well, they definitely know our, our account, you know. Um, <laughs> well, the real, you know, the really funny thing, Kevin, about the paintings is, is that Christine is my, my biggest fan. And I, I don't know if that's because she's my spouse or whether or not she really likes them or not. But but the funny thing is, is a lot of times I'll do a painting and I'm thinking to myself, man, I really ought to sell this painting. But next thing you know, it ends up on Christine's wall. So, you know. <laughs> that's what you call a significant under, other who uh, appreciates <laughs> your gifts. But she would, regardless of whether she was your significant, significant other or not, I think. Yes, absolutely. I mean, he's such a beautiful painter. He paints more realistic and I paint a little more abstract. And the funny thing is, is sometimes I'm like, God, I wish I could paint like you. And he'll say, Ugh, I wish I could paint like you, you know? So it's like, there's, there's that appreciation for each other and what each other can do. And also maybe a little bit of envy too, at the same time, you know, because I can't do what he does and he he could do what I do, but <laughs> I tried. I trust me, I've tried, Kevin. And you know, I am I just don't and maybe it's just the the, the way that that my mind operates, you know, because everybody's mind seems to operate a little bit differently. But I I've tried. I think I sat there once and I tried to do this abstract thing with her and I stepped away and I'm like, I cannot believe I did this. It just was not up to her level. I mean, she Christine really does have a very special gift and you know, and I've and I've said this before, and, and and nobody likes to be compared, but she's got a she's got a very unique style that she's developed over the last you know, year and a half or so, right? Mm -hmm. uh, since she started picking up painting, um, it's got a very unique style that um, when you really look at her portfolio together, and and I think you've looked at her website, right? Oh yes. Yeah, she's got a. When you really look at the pictures as a total um, as a total set. You know, there's certain characteristics about them that really do make them very unique. And I find that totally fascinating because, uh, first of all, not everybody can paint. 
you know, and, and then second of all, you know, when you do start to put together something like that and you see these certain characteristics, you're like, you know, this person really is a painter. So, so hopefully she understands that and recognizes that in herself and she really can grab onto that and, and, move, and keep moving forward. When I was a kid, I got one of those paint by numbers kits hmm. and uh, people looked at it and said, what is that? Uh, because that's, <laughs> I'm afraid that's a gift that I do not have. I admire you guys for being able to, to look at <laughs> my, my uh, former wife. She, she was a painter too. And she was doing this great big canvas one time. And, um, she started sketching out what she was going to do on it. And I was lying there on the couch cause I'd had a surgery and, uh, and I was saying to myself, no matter how bad it is, don't tell her it's awful. Uh, because I thought it was going to be terrible, but she, there's something that you guys get in your mind's eye that I cannot conceive of. Does that make sense to you guys? It does make sense. But for me, I feel like that my painting ability isn't really from me. It's from the divine because I know if I get in my head too much and I try, I consciously try to paint, I it's, it's a struggle and it, it's frustrating, but if I can just calm myself and I can get myself grounded and I just allow the intuitive energy to go through me, that's, what's going to end up on the canvas. So I'm just the, the, um, the, the hands that are, are being guided by the divine to put on the canvas, what goes on the canvas. Kind of the conduit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's a good word. I can think of it. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, John, for uh, Behind the Power, you're going to speak, um, and you're going to be on stage speaking. What are you talking about? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been on a stage, and I, I used to periodically do that with the Coast Guard, but that was years ago. So this is going to be my first time in a very long time, and I'm going to be speaking about a subject that is... Well, it's, it's, it's something that I struggled with now. I found out that I've really been struggling for at least the last 50 years and that's codependency, you know, and, and, and why that's important to me is, is really for two reasons. Number one, um, codependency has shown up in my current relationship with Christine and it's been something that we really have been struggling with for the last 15 years. Um, and it's something that, uh, really manifested over time. Now, you know, codependency in and of itself, when you look up definitions, at least, you know, the older definitions, a lot of times, you know, it's related to, you know, maybe partners for alcoholics or drug abusers and things like that. But over time, it's really grown to expand a broader audience than that. Uh, so codependency for me kind of manifests as as this need to uh, be validated by other people as opposed to myself, you know, looking for my own self-worth in other people. And then when I can't find that, it ends up manifesting in, in anger or frustration or things like that. And when you're in a relationship that, that you're blind to that and you don't even know that that is that, that exists in that relationship, like with Christine and I for the longest time, um, it becomes a very combative situation and it, it can be, it can be hurtful on both sides, you know, obviously, right. Not only, not only Christine's side, but my side as well, because I fail to understand why she doesn't see me. And she's failing to understand why she's not being heard. And there's these, these things that are going on in the background, all because of those codependency issues. Mm -hmm. But first, I have to acknowledge that Allison Roberts is here with us. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Allison. Allison. Thank you. Thank you for, and we had a great show on, uh, on KKNW on Friday. And um, I actually did a replay of it today because the guest I had scheduled crapped out. So um, that's as will happen in life. And so it, that worked out, that worked out really quite well that we were able to do that. So Allison, uh, hello. And she, she's going to be running the show at behind the power in October. And we'll, we'll go into that in more detail, but, but uh, but uh, thank you, Allison, for being here. We really appreciate it. And and John, you know, it struck me when you were saying codependency that um, have you ever heard of or read the book The Five Love Languages? No, I haven't. I haven't heard of it or read it. Is the oh look at that? We sold more uh, uh, pivots to pivots to power. Is that right? Painless pivots to power. 
Yeah. I knew I was missing a word in there. So that's <laughs> that's awesome. So congratulations. And at least I know somebody's listening somewhere. That's that's pretty <laughs> that's that's pretty good. But uh, um, but, but codependency is I think a lot of people have it and have no idea and have gone through their whole life without ever having any idea, unless you have somebody like an Allison Roberts who can kind of point it out to you. Um, you, you go through life just assuming that that's just the way it is. Yep, That's exactly. And, and that's really what I've discovered. Thanks to Allison. Uh, and, and really thanks to Christine as well, because I think, you know, um, you know, I think I think the key thing when it comes to that sort of definition or that so I, I want to call it a diagnosis because it's not really a diagnosis. It's it's more of a, geez, I don't even know what word I would use for that. It's more of a uh, of an underlying um, uh, mindset, right? It's a mindset that that you feel that you need to do certain things to feel worthy, right? Um, yeah, you 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 almost need somebody to to kind of number one, get to know who you are first, get to know about your history, get to understand the dynamics in your past, because codependency just doesn't spring out of nowhere, right? No. It comes from something. And dollars for donuts, it's going to come from childhood trauma. Now, for me, I didn't grow up in what I consider an abusive relationship. You know, my parents got along as far as I know. I mean, I never saw them fight, never saw them argue. Um, but there were underlying things that did affect and were traumatic to me. You know, and those are some of the things I'm going to discuss during my speech on stage and hopefully meet with some people afterwards so that we can have a conversation as well. Um, but if you don't recognize that, if you don't have somebody that that's willing to listen to you, to understand you, to have the compassion to, to really um, uh, go with you on your journey as you're trying to discover yourself, um, you won't see it. And if you don't see it, then you can't help heal it. And when I was when I when it finally clicked it was like I was ready to start looking at my childhood to start healing that so that I can start making changes, uh, not only for myself, but also for, for my relationship with Christine. And you met Allison two years ago. Is that yeah, right? I think it was about two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Through a painless pivots to power, um, online webinar. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, that's that's this week, as a matter of fact, it starts on Wednesday. So if you're listening to this now, you can go to AllisonRoberts.com and you can sign up for it. It's a whole 27 bucks. So it's It's not going to break the bank and it'll it, and it'll be really good for you if, if you do that. So you've got a couple of days. She does this periodically, like once a quarter, I believe. And so she'll probably do another one in like November or maybe September. I, I don't know. Maybe if she's still with us, she can tell us when the next one is, but that somebody can sign up for. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great program. Uh, and it's a great introduction to what it is that she does. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> she, she says, I uh, wasn't prepared to be interviewed. Apparently. <laughs> oh, no, this is, <laughs> The last one of the year. So if you want to get into this one, I suggest you can, you go in the next couple of days to uh, AllisonRoberts.com because she's going to be busy for the rest of the year um, <laughs> or so it would seem. And uh, but so you discovered this, John, a couple of years ago. Has that had that knowledge that you have now about it? Has that affected your life in a bunch of ways? Has it affected your marriage? Well, it absolutely has. And really, you know, that, that, that discovery about the codependency really, and I've, I've known Allison now and worked with her for two years, but this didn't really start to click for me till maybe six months ago, seven months ago. And, and, and maybe Christine has said this before, I don't know, but you know, when it comes to hearing things from people, whether or not it's coaches, parents, leaders, whatever, you know, you really have to be in the right frame of mind for it to really click inside your head. So even though the topic had come up before, you know, and she would talk about it in classes or, we, you know, I mean, I've got notebooks and things like that of all the things we've talked about. It, I, I guess I really wasn't ready for everything to click. So I don't know if it was one thing she said or a couple of things she said, but all I know is about, you know, seven or eight months ago, it clicked and I had to step back and go, you want to know something? The codependency issue is real because that's what's been infected. That's, been, that's what's been affecting my entire life. Mm -hmm. All the decisions I made, the, the whole reason I joined the Coast Guard, the whole reason, you know, I've been divorced, the whole reason that I'm having issues now with 
with Christine, of course, this was, you know, eight or nine months ago, was all because of this codependent behavior, you know, and it has gotten better. I mean, it's not solved, but by being willing to look at it, by, by, by being willing to look at, you know, the childhood trauma and talk to my inner child, right, which is something that, you know, most of us aren't going to sit there and do. That's just not something we do. And I talked a little bit about this the last time we spoke, um, but that's a really important piece because it's the inner child that needs to be healed because the inner child really is what's affecting you now. And if you don't heal that, then you're not going to make any changes now. Mm -hmm. So, but, but it has, but it has been a very positive experience. And I think Christine and I are getting along a lot better now. We're respecting each other's boundaries better now. Uh, we're not as afraid to be independent. I mean, she's painting and running her own thing now. You know, she was never doing that before. So, and, and I don't feel jealous about it. I'm not, you know, getting up in her business about it. Now I might have 10 years ago, but I am by no means doing that now. And that's because I'm understanding her more as an individual, as part of a relationship, as opposed to being my wife which by the way is a very horrible description because that implies ownership. It does indeed. It yeah. does indeed. And, and these days, these days you can get slapped for that. Um, <laughs> but but it, it is different. And, and I would just like you to talk to people that are listening now or in the future about some of the symptoms that they had that was codependency that they might not recognize. And if they, if they can then recognize it from what your description is, they can go get help. Okay. Well, and Christine, if you can, you can chime in as well, because I know that, that you're very familiar with this since we've talked about this and gone through this, but, but speaking on behalf of myself, I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest earmarks that really told me that I had these codependent behaviors uh, was this, fear of doing anything without Christine, mm -hmm. where it would be very restrictive for me, you know, um, and I would ask for permission to do things, knowing that I didn't necessarily need permission, but I felt this internal sense of obligation that I had to ask permission. So this included things like spending money. Now, I'm not talking big money here, Kevin. I'm not talking about going and out and dropping, you know, $40,000 on a vehicle. I'm talking about, well, Hey, Christine, is it okay if I go out and I buy this water? You know, I mean, really little things like that. And it, it wasn't because there's any kind of, of cruelty involved, like she was forcing me. This is something that I just did, you know, and uh, that was something that got tedious. And I would think, Christine, right, me asking these things all the time. Yeah, I mean, he, it's like you're an adult, you know, if you want to go buy something, go buy something. You don't have to ask my permission, like not your mother, you know, that kind of thing. And right. But, but, but it's a behavior that when yeah. you say yes, I feel like you're recognizing me and you see what I'm doing, even though it's just this really small thing, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's a behavior that, that I would continually do, you know, and then of course the anger thing and, and control is part of it too. And the reason that I think codependents feel that they need to control situations isn't necessarily because they want dominance it's because if they control the situation, then the outcome is more likely to be in their favor and then it makes them feel good. Plus, I think it, it's a safety thing, too, about feeling yes. safe. If you're in control of what's happening, then you have more of a safe feeling where if things are out of control and you can't, you know, navigate it, then you feel unsafe. And that's where the reactiveness comes in into play. Right. And the other big thing, Kevin, just just one more big thing of those top three, I would say, is this feeling that Christine needs to change for me to be happy. Now, that's the one that I struggle with, you know, and, and a lot of people, I think, struggle with this. Right. Kevin, you're only going to be happy during this radio broadcast if Christine and John perform perfectly. Because if they do, then you feel worthy that you've done your job, right? So that's that type of mindset that codependents can display, right? Mm -hmm. If Christine would only do certain things, act a certain way, say certain things, then for me, life would be perfect. But the fact of the matter is, 
the only person I can change is me, right? And the thing is, is he's not the only one that had had have had has these symptoms. You know, you know, I was going through similar things too, where you know there was a lot of blame, like mm -hmm. blaming him for what was happening or blaming him for me being miserable or blaming him, you know, because we're stuck in some place in the middle of West Virginia, you know, that kind of thing. And it was really about. <laughs> I like West Virginia. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hate to say this guys, but you are describing almost every marriage that I know. <laughs> Well, I mean, what does that tell you then? What does that tell you, Kevin? Does that yeah. tell you that maybe there is this underlying problem? And that's one of the things that I do comment about in my speech is that codependency is is extremely prevalent. And, and Allison has mentioned this to, to us numerous times, you know, when the topic comes up is it really is a very prevalent problem that we have because we seem to think, and, and, and this is how I was brought up. I mean, my father was a World War II veteran. So he was, when I was born, he was in his 40s. Uh, my mother was born in the 30s, so she was she, you know, she had her probably her formative years in her teens, what 40s, she's 40s, 50s, 50s, early 50s, right? So completely different mindset than than today. Right. So I grew up with that. And I hate to hate to use the cliche, leave it to Beaver mentality, but that's kind of what I had when I left the home, you know. So I think folks of 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 my particular generation. And that would include Christine because she was born, you know, during this this period as well. Tend to think that marriages need to be this certain way, and the fact is they're not. That's 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 a story that we made up based on what our parents told us and what we saw on television. Yeah, I mean, well, that's all, go ahead. I was going to say that's all we know is what we learned from our parents, and that what they knew is what they learned from their parents, and that's what we talked about last time. It's a generational thing, you know, and it's not. In, until you come to this awareness that you're you're not liking the way your life is going or you're not liking you know who you are as a person that you s go in search of something better and or a better way of being and really in search of who you really are so john did your mother really put makeup on when your dad came home like like june cleaver did you know remember well, she was always she was always dressed to yeah. the nines and she had a beautiful dress on and with the pearls and all that. When he would come home, hi, dear, how are you? Well, hi, dear, how are you? You know, it was, it was one of those things that it just doesn't seem like it was actually real. But in those days, it's, it's, it's like, uh, um, I love Lucy, uh, mm -hmm. when she got pregnant as the first time on in television history that somebody was actually pregnant on TV. Right. You yeah. Know, I don't, you know, we weren't to that extreme. I mean, we grew up, um, you know, my, we, I grew up in a poor household, so it wasn't exactly, and, and maybe that's part of it too. I mean, you know, we see it today. The media is such a big impact on people. I mean, with, especially with cell phones now and the, and the devices that we, we tend to believe what we see. And maybe for me, it was, I wanted my, my relationship when I got married to be like, you know, June Cleaver. Well, and, not and, for, for me. Yeah, I get it. I, <laughs> I know what you're saying. But it must have been really weird that when you got together 15 years ago, Christine was not displaying some of the gifts that she now is known for. And that <laughs> how did that conversation go? <laughs> yeah, it um yeah, yeah, there's yeah, there's it's it's kind of uh, yeah, it's 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 a very it's a very interesting our, you know what? Our, our marriage has been very interesting. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, it started off. Well, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but, but it started off one way and it's morphing into something different. And I think that's a good thing. Well, yeah, I, first yeah. of all, I would like to applaud both of you yeah. for 15 years and for hanging with it. And you've got intestinal fortitude and you're going to, and you're going to work through it. And I doubly applaud you for seeking Allison's help, uh, where she could she could really help you get get through some of that stuff. So that's 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 really cool. But I want to I want to turn to Christine for a little bit because she intrigues me with her gifts. She is um, I I just love what what she does, and I don't know how she does it, but 
it's it really is it, now you've John, let me go back to you because I I've got so many questions because you've seen her develop this firsthand. At what point did you stop thinking, "Oh dang, my wife's nuts"? To when, <laughs> <laughs> when you were saying, "There's something to this. I, she's she's good at what she does." Yeah, it's interesting with me because I've always been a believer in the supernatural and the paranormal ever since I was a kid, and yet when Christine started to display these talents, I'm like who the hell did I marry here? Right. Just this weirdo person. Right. Which it's really weird when you think about it. I mean, how can you believe in one and yet not believe the same thing when it's sitting in your backyard? Um, so to speak. Um, I, I really want to say, and Christine will tell you the story in Hawaii is really when there was an episode that made the most impact on me. Now, even then, after she tells you the story here, I was still a little skeptical about it. But what really sealed the deal for me was when she decided to take up her soul paintings. Because when she started to do that and I started to see and hear the responses from her clients, uh, you, you cannot doubt at all that she has the ability to be able to connect to something greater than us. And it's a very outstanding gift to have it can be a little scary sometimes i know christine will tell you that because it's 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 a big responsibility but she handles it with poise she handles it with pride she handles it with 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 a very compassionate touch um so i mean she really does it very very well so christine look if if kevin will indulge you if this, this the hawaii story i think is fascinating oh indulge indulge go ahead <laughs> well there's um these military quarters they call the compound it, i believe it was originally a navy base john mm -hmm. yes yes um and the main house is was actually a hospital at one point in time and we had friends who were living in the house and i'd go to the house every so often and there'd be one room that i'd walk by and i'd kind of get a headache and just get a funny feeling around it and we had gone to their house one thanksgiving and there was a bunch of us military families who were there. And I had a friend who had just recently lost um, a loved one. And we were talking about grounding. So I was teaching her. We were in the kitchen. And I was teaching her what, how I was taught to ground. And I could feel this like swirling energy just swirling around us. And I'm like, do you feel that? And she's like, yeah, I can feel the hair on the back of my neck standing up. I'm like, okay, that's just weird. So I continued to show her how to ground. And then <laughs> I don't know why I did this, but I, I was like, okay, what is this? Like what's happening? So I went into the other room and I closed my eyes and I grounded myself and I'm like, what is this? So what I saw in my mind was this military member dressed in their white uniform with the little white hat. And I saw this like explosion, like in their stomach area. And then all of a sudden, I had these intense pains in my stomach, and I couldn't breathe. I was just like gasping for air. And I'm going, okay, what's I wasn't scared or anything through this whole process, but it was more like, what's happening? So it just got, it was getting worse. Like I couldn't breathe, like my hands were turning white, and my whole body started to shake and shiver. Um, I ended up outside with a couple of the people and I ended up in the fetal position flat on the ground and they're like praying over me. They're telling me it's my body. They're tell telling whatever it was to get out and it just wasn't happening. And they went and got John. John came out and he was telling me the same thing. And literally my whole body just was shivering and shaking. I turned white as a ghost and it wasn't until we stepped away from the house and we walked away that it, it disconnected from me. So basically I was going through, I was being shown, physically shown the process of this man's death. And it was actually an honor that I was able to witness this man in his passing and to recognize him and to honor him in that way. So did they ever say what he actually died from? 
the only thing I saw, I don't know if he was shot. It looked like he was shot in the stomach is what it looked like when I saw it happening. Um, but I can't say for sure that's what it was. That's just what it looked like to me. That's what he showed me. So at, the, at that point, it was it was like, oh, boy, oh, boy, she she actually knows what and that, that actually was real. And if nothing else, it was real for you. Right. Oh, yes. Very real. Very real. But I wasn't afraid, like I said, and I wasn't scared. It's just something that happened. So he well, you can say how you reacted and what you thought and felt about it. <laughs> well, I mean, it just it was it was well, first of all, it was unexpected. Mm hmm. You know, and, you know, we were in this group environment and these are my peers. These are my colleagues and their spouses. It was Thanksgiving, like she said. And it, it for me, it was a very surreal experience to see this. But it was clear that that she was experiencing a physical manifestation of something, you know. And, and, and like she said, when we walked away, she was fine. So whatever happened to her that day uh, wasn't you know, a, a normal human reaction to food or something like that. There was definitely something that affected her. Um, but that really, I think was, was a, the, was a key moment in my, you know, discovery of Christine's talents. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's really is true. Uh, and so, um, Christine, how did you feel when you came out of that? Were you, I know you, you said that you were you were honored that that he showed himself that way mm -hmm. uh, to you, but there wasn't any anything like, oh damn, what was that? <laughs> no, there really wasn't. Um, but I was definitely um, excited to speak to my coach at the time, and I'm like, you wouldn't believe what happened to me, and you know, gave her the whole spiel, and she's like, well, she's the one who really said to me, you know, you got jumped basically and he showed you um his passing i'm like that was cool but i'm not sure i want to happen again <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you because that you brought up something that happened in in my youth and i and i want to get your opinion on it if i can mm -hmm. my grandfather died he died at 71 he had cancer of the spleen and spleen stomach area lower stomach and I, in the, in those days, we were um, in in high school. We were going, well, we were double shifting. So so we went to school in the afternoon, and and I was playing football in the morning. And I started getting this pain in the in my in my abdomen. It felt kind of like where my your appendix is in the, in that area. Mm -hmm. And it started. It got stronger and stronger. Would not go away. It just stayed there and stayed there. And of course, that was the day of the funeral. So they, my family, my mother picked me up from um, the uh, football practice and I was having this pain, didn't mention anything to her because I was thinking to myself, gosh, this is getting worse. If my appendix is, is gone bad and this is the day of the funeral, I'm, I need to go to the funeral. I'm not, I'm not going to go to the hospital now. I'll wait until after the funeral's done. And so we go to the funeral and it still hurts. We go to the internment. It still hurts. And then it starts getting worse at the end of the internment. And right when the, the uh, pastor, or the, the I guess it would be a priest, at that point, he, he gave his last benediction. And I felt really bad. Then I got nauseous. So I went to the bathroom because I thought I was going to throw up. And then I, I kneeled down, and it all went away. Interesting. Right, right, after, right after that, it was like, now that was weird uh, because that was, you know, like, so it it was almost to me like he was telling me that uh, he was there and he was showing me that the kind of pain that he was in. Yeah, I that's very possible. Um, and the other thing is, is yeah, if you're you're sensitive and you're open to it, that's absolutely possible. And even with our own emotions and what we experience through someone's passing, that energy can definitely um, stay within our our tissue, our muscle tissue, our fascia. Um, and, and it just can sit there and it can actually create, you know, discomfort until uh, you release that. And I say that because when I was a massage therapist, I would have people on the table and I could feel where they had uh, stored all of their stress and the tension in their body. And it would actually as soon as I would touch them, it would go through my body. And as soon as I released that muscle, 
it would disappear. If that that's makes sense. interesting. Yeah. So how long were you a massage therapist for? Um, I became a massage therapist in 2010. Uh, I worked in West Virginia until 2011 when we moved to Hawaii. Um, I got licensed in Hawaii and worked there, worked doing massage for about a year. And then it, because of being an empath, it became overwhelming because there was some really intense, strong energy and it was really affecting me physically. And it was prior to meeting my coach at the time. So I stopped um, until I, you know, I was going through her classes and stuff, but I never really picked it up again after that. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting that, that when you are married to a military man, somebody that was in the Coast Guard for 35 years, you're going to move every so often. And while you didn't like West Virginia, I'll bet you liked Hawaii a whole lot better. Oh, I loved Hawaii. I mean, even just stepping off the plane, the atmosphere is completely different than it is here in the mainland. And it's just so spiritual and the people are amazing. Um, it's just such a beautiful place to be and and. To, to just absorb that energy in their culture. It's, it's an amazing place. If people haven't visited there, I highly recommend it. <laughs> so John, were you, were you on Oahu? I was. Yep. And it, by the um, memorial? No, we were, uh, we were living in Hawaii Kai, which is on the uh, Southeastern side uh, where Cocoa Crater is where one of, one of many extinct, extinct volcanoes are. So Pearl Harbor, where the Arizona is, that was about, Everything in Hawaii is close, so that was only about, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes from where we were living. Yeah, if that. Yeah. Yeah, going to that memorial is is, is something. Right. Um, and, and stuff. So, but anyway, so let's get back to you guys. Um, it's it's. I think it's wonderful that you are going down this journey together. Have you discussed that, whether or not it's, it's kind of like a, a journey that you're on and you're, you're in self discovery, even after 15 years of marriage? It's, it's, well, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I, I'm finding things out about myself. I didn't know. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm also trying my hardest to, you know, heal those past traumas so that I don't keep perpetuating the same behaviors. I mean, when I look at myself now compared to like a year or so ago or two years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, um, I, f I feel completely different. I mean, I feel um, much more like myself, which is something I don't think I felt since I was, you know, 10 or 11 years old. You know, when you, when you, when you live your whole life trying to please other people and trying to make yourself feel worthy by doing things for them, mm -hmm. uh, you, you do lose touch with who you are. And I think now because of all this work, I'm feeling more like me. The work is good, isn't it? That, it, that uh, Allison has you go through. Yep. Yeah. And I think Christine will even admit it's not always easy. I mean, mm -mm. it's, it's, it, it, but, but, but it's worth it. I mean, and that's the thing I think your listeners really need to understand is that anything worth doing is worth doing well. And I think this is one of those things where, um, yeah, it's easy to say I'm going to change, but it's not that easy to change. I think it really does take work because you do have a history. You know, that, that old saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming into this relationship with all this baggage. And, and we kind of laugh it off a lot of times. But the fact is you come in with a lot of baggage, you know, and unless you take care of that baggage, um, you know, if anybody ever says that to you, Kevin, you go out on a date, they say, you know something, Kevin, I got all this baggage, you know, don't worry about it. I, if I were you, I'd be a little bit worried about it if they even say that. So. No, when you see, when you get to be, I'm a little, little bit older than you are, young man. And when you get to be my age, everybody's got baggage. And unfortunately, <laughs> mine comes with grandkids and great grandkids at this point. It's all, it's all solvable though. You just have to really put in that effort and, and focus on yourself. And it's not, it's not an all about me thing. It's really, all, it, it isn't, it isn't. Um, you know, the work you do is very individual in nature because you're self-examining. Um, however, you know, because we work in group environments, because we work on one-on-one -on -one with Allison and, and I'm fortunate enough to, to have Christine to bounce things off and we communicate a lot more now than we've ever done. Um, I think that that conversation, being able to be vulnerable, open and recognize your imperfections, for example, really goes a long way to changing your mind about yourself. And that's really where it's all at. 
Oh, I couldn't agree more. But you know, there there are people like me that I probably I probably have issues. Well, I know, <laughs> I Allison's already pointed out one that uh, on the air. By the way, she's not shy that one. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> and, and she said, "If you want to talk about it more, we can do that." And so we might. Uh, but <clears throat> it's one of those things where I think all of us uh, grow up, and we'd like to think that our upbringing didn't have a negative impact on what happened after that but i think it always it, it does and if you bury it and um you do, my my uh, former wife's family as an example they had a family it was almost like their job where they would ignore stuff if they got into a fight on wednesday by thursday morning the everybody forgot that it actually had happened or they covered it up but over time, it became very, very destructive to the family because they didn't care for each other anymore. And a matter of fact, one of them committed suicide uh, later on because the family was so dysfunctional, they couldn't even talk about how dysfunctional they were. Wow. That's sad. It is. but And in those days, thank God times are different because in those days, going <laughs> their son had a cocaine addiction. So they, he was in, in treatment uh, uh, for cocaine addiction, and the psychologist wanted to get mom and dad and him in the same room because when they weren't, he was telling them all sorts of things that mom and dad did or did not do in his mind. But mm -hmm. mom wouldn't go. She, wow. she, wouldn't, she wouldn't go to the psychologist because she didn't think it's not my fault. And that's how they used to think. I'm glad people are getting a little bit. And John, I'm glad you're going to be on stage talking about this because you're going to be talking about things that people are going to look at and go, Oh, that sounds awful familiar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> While you were talking, I had several. It was like, gee whiz, that was awful familiar. Well, I think you're going to find that with all the speakers this year and actually the same so. last year when they were up there. I think what we're, what we're all bringing to the table is that, that honesty, right? Where we've done the, the self examinations, you know, we're all on our various stages of progression as we get through this life that we're, that we're currently blessed with. Um, but I think everybody is going to bring a different aspect that I think we all can identify with. I know that, that Carrie's speech and um, Michelle's speech and, and Anna and everybody else at Christie's, you know, everybody that we've, that, that you've had on the show, they're all bringing something different and everything that they're going to speak about to some level affects me. It would affect you, Christine. And, th and that's really the beauty of the whole program and, and, and behind the power, I think. I, I agree. And, and it's, a great, it's a great program that, that I think more people need to go to. So if you want to find out more about it, go to allisonroberts.com. And it's behind the power. And there's also uh, um, the PPP. What? Painless pivots to power. Dang it. I keep forgetting painless part. <laughs> Maybe I need to work with that. Uh, painless pivots to power. That starts in two days. And you can go to the uh, her website. And it's $27. It's a three-day seminar. And mm -hmm. it's just an hour investment each day. So mm -hmm. it's not like an all-day thing. But it, it gets you an idea what it's like to work with somebody who is um, very gifted at what she does. And she doesn't accept no for an answer very often. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys are laughing. But <laughs> she said that on the show on Friday. She said, I'm just a natural butt kicker. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, it, it's really funny when I actually, the, the, Christine's the same way. And this is that this is another thing I'm learning. <laughs> over time, you know, uh, it's, the same way. <laughs> well, well, it, yeah, it's right. It, it's really funny because, in, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to people and does it, it's, I'll listen to people and I won't hear them. And I, I'm always going to want to do my own thing. And then I do my own thing. And then people wonder, why did you do that? Because it turned out to be a disaster. And it's because I'm not listening to people. You know, I've got this, it's, it's, again, it goes back into the codependency in this control thing. Right. Um, but it's really funny because as you're talking, I'm thinking about the conversations I've had with Allison and or and with Christine, where I'm starting off with this very pointed, this is the way that I'm thinking, and this has got to be the right way. And then by the end of the conversation, I'm completely the other way around because what they're saying makes sense. You know, and the big thing is listening, right? It's the listening piece. 
<laughs> that's the, that's the biggest thing that in my in my humble opinion in my professional career and stuff people have trouble listening yeah and there's a there's a reason that somebody once said uh you know god gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason um so that because if you, when i was in when i was in sales i used to complain to my sales guys that they were not listening to the customer they were trying to formulate their next argument while the customer was talking rather than listening to what the customer said, which might've avoided the whole thing. And we do that in our marriages. We do that, you know, with our kids, we do that in we listening is an art form that is not practiced very well. Mm -mm. And I think that's something that has, we've both evolved in is that listening piece and just being able to even repeat back what the person is saying so that you're understanding clearly, you know, in that they feel heard, you know, and that's really big is to, to, to feel heard and to be seen by the other person, you know, because that in itself is validating, you know, that they're seeing you and that they're hearing you and that they're respecting what you're saying and how you're feeling and not taking what you're saying personally. You know, I think that's something that we've both worked on as well and to, to understand that, my triggers and my reactions have nothing to do with him. They have everything to do with me and my past and, and my filters and all of that. So if I fly off the handle or, you know, I start crying for whatever reason, I think he's able to handle that better now, understanding that it has nothing to do with him and it has everything to do with me. And just hearing me when I, when I say, I just need a hug. I don't need a device. I just need a hug. You know, and he's gotten so much better at that. And it's he's made such tremendous progress over these past two years. It's amazing. See, see, isn't that nice? That, that, that's <laughs> we, you, you know, somebody, what, who was it that said that, said that uh, um, repeating back to somebody what you just heard is a great way of both validating them and also uh, determining that you were listening to what they were saying or that they were saying what, so rather than, rather than get upset about it, you say, this is what I think I heard you say. Mm -hmm. Is this, is this what you said? Is this what you meant to say? And, and then people can analyze that what, because you know, it's that, that old saying where you got 10 people lined up and you have a story that starts here by the end of it. Uh, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. um, so, Communicating properly, that's 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 key to to making it work for everybody, I think. Definitely. I think the same applies for text messages, by the way. So if you get these weird texts sometimes that you're like, uh, what are they saying? There's nothing wrong with going back and say, is 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 this what I'm hearing you say? Uh, because we we do tend to interpret things. I have an associate who is great at text, at text messaging, but sometimes if she's in a hurry, she can be kind of short. Mm -hmm. And so I will take that text message, which is not flowery and wonderful. And Hey, how are you? It's nice to see you. It would be like, no, gotta go. Yep. And I'll stew about that for a whole day over a damn text message yeah. mm -hmm. because it wasn't what I perceived it to be. And that's, mm -hmm. we all do that. That's, and I asked my son one time, he's 30 years old now. He could actually, while he was in school, he could text people and the phone never left his pocket. Oh, <laughs> in, in class, and I said, how did you do that? And he said, Dad, when you text enough, you know where all the all the uh, numbers and letters are, and uh, and I said, why do you text? Why don't you want to talk to people? And he said, well, that way, see, I can talk to four girls at the same time. <laughs> hey, that's a tip I never thought of. Oops, sorry, Christine. Hey, now. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is you got to make sure you get the names right. Ah, that's uh, true. That would be a problem. That is that's a very dangerous game to play. Uh, but I do, we're going to have to wrap this up, but I would like each of you to give our listeners a reason why uh, both painless pivots to power. See, I said at that time and behind the power would be great events for them to go to when they're offered in the future. Now, the one in October is uh, for uh, uh, behind the power is still open. We're still taking reservations for it. 
and that is the 19th through the 21st of mm-hmm. October. Uh, and you can go there. It's not very expensive. You get if you're if you're there for four days in a, in a four star hotel or five star hotel, and you get breakfast and lunch, and you get a couple of dinners and stuff like that. It's like twelve fourteen hundred bucks. It's not a big deal, and you'll learn so much. Mm-hmm. But ladies first could you tell our audience why they should attend i think if you're you're ready if if your life just doesn't feel right and it's not what you want it to be i think that's a good starting place um to start at paying this pivots to power just to explore you know the different ways that you can shift your life you can shift the way you think and you feel And you can shift your beliefs, you know, when you're ready and you're open to do that, there's the possibilities are endless and coming to pay to um, behind the power. So now I'm mixing the two up coming to behind the power. I have that effect on people. (laughs) You're just going to discover yourself that much more because you're going to be around people who are going to receive you with so much love and compassion and they're just going to welcome you like your family. And you're going to learn so much from Allison, so much more, even above and beyond painless pivots to power. And you're going to get to meet all of us authors and just hear about our experiences and what we went through um, to get where we are today. You know, it's a lifelong journey, the, the healing journey. And to start now is the best place to start. It's never too late. John? Well done, Christine. I like that answer. Um, I would say for actually for both painless pivots and for behind the power, speaking from a male perspective, I think it's time we change our minds about things. And I think the best way to do that is to invest in yourself and say, hey, you know, I need to change the way I think about my life. I need to change the way I think about women. I need to change the way I think about my childhood. And the only way you can do that is by taking that first step. So painless pivots, like you said, is only $27. The three hours, uh, you know, the the one day, uh, one hour, three days, uh, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's replays for that. So you do not need to be there online when this class happens. You can pay the 27 and watch those replays after. It's worth every penny of it. And the Behind the Power event is that one opportunity you have to really make a difference in your own life because you're going to be listening to 13 powerful speakers. You're going to have access to Allison Roberts, one of the top 100 coaches in the world. Um, And she's very personable. Trust me. Um, You can speak to her about anything and she will listen. And you'll have the opportunity to talk to folks like us, just people just like you and I, who are working very hard to change our lives. So if we can do it, you can do it. All it takes is the first step. So $27 to get you going, and then the rest is up to you. And John, I would like to um, give you some kudos, because for whatever reason, the uh, masculine uh, side of uh, things are a little bit behind the feminine as far as self-discovery, looking for better ways to live, understanding that there are better things, better ways to be, better ways to treat people. And I applaud you for being one of those guys. Well, thank you. Yeah. You're going to be somebody that we're going to hold up to as, and say, you know, <laughs> why don't you be more like him? That would be good. Well, I appreciate that. I, th- I, th- I really, I really think that with everything else, we're in a very strange time. And I think that that minds need to be corrected, not fixed, because there's nothing wrong with our minds. We're not broken people. I think that they just need to be corrected. Maybe using Allison's word, we, we need to pivot our mentality a little bit uh, to get back in line with, I think, the direction we need to go in. And I think the masculine side specifically needs to do that. And now is the time to do it because things are not going to get better unless we start changing our minds. And unless we start listening to each other. Exactly. And and understanding that everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but they're not entitled to their own facts. But 
that being said, it's, I got to tell you, when you guys come on and do this again, I've enjoy, I really enjoy talking to you too. Absolutely. I would love to come back. Thank you for having me today. <laughs> it was a little <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> Well, you just magically showed up. That's what happens in my life. And John, how about you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I had a great time again, Kevin. I think, uh, again, your message that, that you're putting out there is wonderful. And, and, and I know having Christine on board like this was, was a lot of fun. So, so thank you, uh, Christine, for, for joining the party. Well, thank you, Kevin and John, for having me. I appreciate it. See, and that's what happens when you have people who appreciate each other for the human that you are and the equality that you both bring to it and that we can have a civil discussion and uh, set our egos aside at the door and just have a nice, a nice chat about, about things. Cause you know, we can all learn from each other. And uh, when we stop, when we, when we stop thinking that we can learn from each other, we are in a lot bigger trouble than I hope we ever have to be. Um, because we can all, we all can contribute and we can do some great stuff and life is a journey and you know, it's, you can, you can change it. I'm John, what are you about 35? You could change at the age of 33 or 34 if you want to. That's right, Kevin. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done the math to how you did it. We're in, and I'm seriously, I mean, thank you very much for your service. He was in the, uh, uh, coast guard for 35 years. And that's, that's a, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's a long stretch, but it was fun. Well, well, good. And, and uh, did, did you catch any drug dealers? Oh, that's a, nope. That's the next show. <laughs> next show. I could tell you some sea stories, Kevin. How about that? That would be, I would love to hear some sea stories. Um, that would be awesome. By the way, we've been talking to John and Christine Cole. Go to Behind the Pivots. She's behind the power uh, in October. And she will, uh, if you're lucky enough, she'll do a soul painting for you uh, that you can take home and, uh, and uh, find out some things that you didn't know about yourself. And, uh, and John's going to talk about codependency, which I think is, is we've, we've all got a, we've all got a big issue with that. Um, and Beth says, thank you for your insight. I, have I met Beth yet? <laughs> I can't remember. No, yeah. not yet. I think she's next week or the week after. Okay. Well, you better prepare yourself because uh, I'm getting better at this. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you guys. It's been, a, it's been a real pleasure to have you. Yeah. And uh, any, anything either of you would like to add before we go? I, 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 like I said, I just want to thank Christine for, for being my partner in this, for, for working with me. And I want to thank, you know, everybody that watches this show, I think that we all, like you said, learn from each other and the other episodes with the other guests that you ha have on are equally imp as important uh, because we're all in this life together. Yes. And I want to thank you, Kevin, uh, for everything that you do uh, for the world and for all of us and bringing us on here and bringing us together. And just to remind everybody that they all have their own individual gifts and that they can shine their light as bright as anybody else. And I hope they do. And please don't be discouraged by anybody because you are all valuable. You are all loved. None of you are alone. And I love you all so very much. And I just wanted to say that, uh, by the way, Beth is going to be on the show September 1st. So cool. Uh, but I just wanted to say that um, the group that, um, that Allison's put together, the th not only the 13 speakers, but the folks that are regulars with her whole thing. You guys have a different outlook of life. You care for each other mm -hmm. and you are supportive of each other more. So you guys all have been here during these shows. It's re I, that's really is cool that you support each other that way. And uh, uh, I'm sure Allison has a hand in that, but it's also because of the humanness and the, desire to be better that has affected has infected all of you <laughs> it's infected you with a gift of life and congratulations thank you gee i wish i'd have said that, that <laughs> so stay right stay right where you are i'll be right back hey thanks for enjoying this episode all the way to the end please give us a like and subscribe to this channel this has been a production of positivetalkradio.net please visit our website oddly named positivetalkradio.net for more details about us and our mission which is to provide great positive programming designed to inspire us all i'm kevin mcdonald and i'm proud of these shows and i truly hope that you'll like them and share them with friends and family 
So on behalf of our entire team, remember, be kind to one another because 